Hello! In this video we're going to take a look at the visual system and the way I'm going to approach that is I'm going to use um, cross-sectional data from the visible human female um, and I'm also going to superimpose onto that some data from um, a brain atlas and some diffusion imaging data just to show us the path of the optic radiations. So um, I'm not going to talk about the specific trajectories in terms of nasal and um, temporal retina and their associated fibres. I think that's actually demonstrated better using diagrams. But all I'm going to do is show you the fibre pathways, including the optic nerves, the chiasm and the radiations. So the first thing we need to do is let's follow the optic nerves, look at the chiasm and look at the optic radiations. And I want you to just take a look on the right hand side at the green panel here which is the coronal section. And what we're going to do is go backwards, move in a posterior direction from the eyeballs which are seen here in the dark circles, um, back through the optic nerves and into the optic tracts. So here let's move posteriorly and you can see that the optic nerves have appeared deep within the orbits just here on the right and the left hand sides and you can see that they're very very nice um, in this in this this visible human data they're shown as quite a pale structure surrounded by all this orbital fat and we can beautifully see the various extraocular muscles there sitting more superficially so let's follow these optic nerves posteriorly so that so you can follow them within the orbit very very easily and on an MRI they also are labeled very nicely um, as you pass through the orbit you can see that they're running more medially now and remember that the optic nerves do run along a kind of diagonal course within the orbit and as we continue to track them further backwards we can still see them just here and here they're now entering the bony optic canal of the sphenoid bone and as we enter the more posterior regions, we can see that they're now becoming quite closely applied to the sphenoid sinus. So this blue-filled region is the sphenoid sinus. When they were preparing the visible human cadavers, um, they did fill various cavities that appeared with this blue gelatin um, just to support the structures as they were doing their sectioning. So this is the sphenoid sinus filled with blue gelatin here. Continuing to move posteriorly, we can see that the two optic nerves are now starting to converge together until we get to approximately this point here where we see the optic chiasm forming. And remember, it's at the optic chiasm that the nasal fibres um, from the retina cross over, whereas the temporal fibres from each retina remain ipsilateral. So as we continue to move backwards, we should see this chiasm split to form the two optic tracts. And now we have the optic tract. So here's the right optic tract, and here's the left optic tract. Remember, these are the optic tracts now, um, not the optic nerves. And these optic tracts continue to move posteriorly to project to the lateral geniculate nucleus in the thalamus. So what you should start to see, and I'm just staying with them with my pointer, is you should start to, should start to see the optic tracts peter out until we get to a region round about here, which is where we're getting towards the lateral geniculate nucleus. So that's about as much as we can get from the coronal sections. Uh, what I've done is I've actually uh, been able to segment out the optic nerves and optic tracts and I'll be able to superimpose that on our 3D view here that's being cut simultaneously in the transverse and sagittal planes. So let's pop the optic nerves and optic tracts just on here. And now if I just go down through the sagittal plane, sorry, the transverse plane, you can see that we've got the two optic nerves right and left. We can see them forming the chiasm at this point and if I zoom in a little um, and move up you should be able to see the optic chiasm just about there. And then we can see that the chiasm splits into the two optic tracts. Now following the optic tracts back and if I just move the transverse plane up somewhat we can see the termination of these optic tracts. So you can see here that the optic tracts are terminating. We've just left the midbrain, so we've gone a bit higher than the midbrain. So here's the familiar kind of Mickey Mouse face of the midbrain here. And remember that the thalamus sits on top of the midbrain, 
and the lateral geniculate is part of the thalamus. So if I move up through the sections, we can just about see the optic tract terminating onto the lateral geniculate that sits in this region here. Okay. So, lateral geniculate is part of the thalamus. So let's pop on the thalamus now, and I'm only going to put the left thalamus on just so that our figure doesn't become too busy. So we'll put on the thalamus now, okay? And the thalamus here is red, and we can see that it's composed of many, many subnuclei. However, you can appreciate that this um, optic tract is terminating on the lateral geniculate nucleus in this region here. And it is from the lateral geniculate nucleus that the optic radiations emanate and run posteriorly towards the occipital lobe. So let's put on the optic radiations. And I'm just going to change the view slightly. I'm just going to move the sagittal plane across a little just so that we can see these optic radiations a bit better. And I'm going to drop the level of the transverse plane as well. So now I'm going to put on the optic radiations. The optic radiations, there are two major optic radiations. In this cyan colour we have the superior optic radiation, and in this purple colour we have the inferior optic radiation. These both originate in the lateral geniculate, and if I zoom in you should be able to see that they're originating from this grey matter here, the lateral geniculate, and then they're coursing posteriorly towards the occipital lobe. Okay? And then we've, so we've got one radiation on the left and one radiation on the right going to each occipital lobe. And remember from your visual pathways that the right occipital lobe is actually receiving information from the left visual field, whereas the left occipital lobe is receiving information from the right visual field. Now, these superior and inferior radiations course through um, two different lobes of the brain. The superior radiation courses through the parietal lobe, whilst the inferior radiation courses through the temporal lobe. So let's just look at these individually um, and try and demonstrate whether we can show them running through two different lobes of the brain. And the way I'm going to try to do that is I'm going to bring across the sagittal plane, okay, and just, for the, and just for the time being, I'm going to turn off our optic radiations. I'm going to make them invisible. And I'm going to bring the sagittal plane across until we can try to demarcate the boundary between the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe. Okay? So, the way we're going to do that is if I drop the transverse plane, can you see here is the uh, lateral fissure or the sylvian fissure. This is insular above and all this above the lateral fissure is parietal lobe whereas the regions below the lateral fissure are temporal lobe. So what we could do is we could draw a line between the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe um, which is corresponding to the lateral fissure and that's what I've done already um, previously so I can just switch that line on so now we can see this green line should correspond approximately to the boundary between temporal lobe and parietal lobe. Parietal lobe sitting above the green line, temporal lobe sitting below the green line. Now if we put our radiations back on, superior radiation um, in blue and inferior radiation in purple, and if I just go medially because they're sitting, remember, in the deep white matter, we can see very, very nicely demonstrated that the inferior radiation here is running within the temporal lobe below the green line, whilst this majority of the superior radiation is running in the parietal lobe above the green line. Now, don't get stressed or anxious if the, the correspondence is not perfect. Remember that there is a great deal of anatomical variation. And actually, furthermore, um, the diffusion data I'm using is not from the visible human data. This is from a different set of brains. So um, it, you've got to think in a statistical way almost. This is average data across many individuals, so there isn't going to be perfect correspondence to 
one individual brain that we have here. Suffice that, however, suffice it to say that we do have a very nice pattern here. We do see that the majority of the inferior or temporal radiation runs within the temporal lobe, and the majority of the superior or parietal radiation runs within the parietal lobe. So that's a little demonstration of um, our superior and inferior optic radiations. If we turn off that line between the temporal and parietal lobes, I just want to show you something else. I'm going to move across once more in the sagittal plane, and I'm going to turn off the superior radiation. If I turn off the superior radiation and if we look down, you can see very nicely how the inferior optic radiation forms this looping structure. And this is eponymously known as Myers loop. Um, and this is typical of the inferior optic radiation as it runs through the temporal lobe. So this is Myers loop looping around through the temporal lobe on its way back to the occipital lobe. So there's Myers loop. Now if we turn back on the superior radiation, I want to follow the radiations posteriorly to their terminations in the occipital lobe itself. Now back in the occipital lobe, um, you can see that the, the radiations retain their topographical organization in that the inferior radiation, having run through the temporal lobe, projects to the inferior portion of the um, visual cortex, whereas the superior radiation, having run through the parietal lobe, projects to the superior portion of the visual cortex. And the landmark that splits these two radiations at the level of the visual cortex is the calcarine sulcus. So let's try to find the calcarine sulcus, and, and I want to direct your attention to the sagittal plane now. And now let's go close to the midline, because that's where the calcarine sulcus exists. And if I zoom in, so just looking at this bottom right-hand section, we can see that what we have here is a quite well-defined sulcus, okay, separating this occipital lobe into a superior portion and an inferior portion. This is the calcarine sulcus. And like with the lateral fissure, I've drawn a line to indicate that. So if we turn on our calcarine sulcus here, we can see that line corresponds very nicely to the calcarine sulcus on the mid-sagittal view. And it appears on the 3D view as well. <clears throat> so if we zoom in onto the 3D view, we can see here's our calcarine sulcus. We can see our inferior radiation projects mostly below the calcarine sulcus. And our superior radiation projects mostly above the calcarine sulcus. So that's a very, very nice demonstration. And remember that the inferior and superior radiations themselves correspond to different portions of the visual field. Remember that the um, superior radiation corresponds to the superior retina and hence the inferior visual field, whilst the inferior radiation corresponds to the inferior retina and hence the superior visual field. So an understanding of the pathways um, in the visual system can be really useful to localise lesions. That's all I want to say. I hope that's been helpful. Thank you for listening.